pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Rowe. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Present. Councilman Racy. Here. Councilman Porter. Here. Councilman Sanders. He did send me a letter or an email saying he was not going to be able to attend the meeting. Okay. Right. And we will mark him as excused. Thank you. Then Councilman Gabriel. No. Did he tell you when he might come back? Councilman Gabriel. Present. Councilman Sutton. Present. Right. Well, you do have a quorum with six members present. The next item is a moment of silence for Delphine Gardner. Delphine Gardner was quite active at the community center and also a longtime member on the Commission on Aging. She passed away this week in her home in Wayne. Okay. She will be missed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item one is the approval of the agenda. Move to approve. <laughs> Support. It's been moved by Mayor Pro Tem Miller and supported by Councilman Gabriel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Item two, our city council minutes. Item 2A are the regular meeting minutes of May 2nd. Move approval. Support. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Gabriel, supported by Councilman Racy. Um, I would like it to please be noted that um, I did have a written email for the last meeting from Councilman Sanders to be excused at that time. So if you could please mark him absent but excused. I will. Thank you. All in favor with the one amendment? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item three is presentation. Item 3A is presentation of life-saving awards to Christopher Chupa and Ian Klossner. Are they present? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. As everyone knows, I believe on April 20th, 2017, a male subject walked to Michigan Avenue overpass with the intention of committing suicide. Um, we have two citizens, citizens here who intervened and frankly um, helped save this man's life. Um, I'd like to present a certificate to each of them, uh, beginning with Mr. Klosner. This is Ian Klosner. I'm just going to uh, read the certificate, which we'll present to him shortly. On the evening of April 20th, 2017, you were outside of the Wayne Bowl when a subject pulled up next to you got out of his car and asked if he could walk up under the railroad tracks from the parking lot. The subject indicated he wanted to harm himself and began to walk up the embankment with an extension cord in his possession. You and another gentleman followed and observed him tie the cord around his neck. As the other man, gentleman began distracting him by talking to him, you were able to tackle him to the ground and hold him there until the police arrived. Your quick actions saved this man's life and should be commended. Uh, next we have Christopher Chupa. On the evening of April 20th, 2017, you were outside of the Wayne Bowl when you learned that a subject was attempting to kill himself on the railroad tracks over Michigan Avenue. You climbed the embankment to the railroad tracks in an attempt to stop the subject from killing himself. You observed that Ian Klosner was talking to the suicidal subject. You distracted the subject, which allowed Mr. Klosner to tackle him and hold him there until the police arrived. Your quick actions saved this man's life, and you are to be commended.
his daughter. Yes. Just, just real quickly, just real quickly, Madam Mayor and Council, uh, I'd like to also clarify the role of Stephen Chase in this incident. Um, there was a mistake at the last City Council meeting. Quite frankly, it was the Police Department's fault. I accept full responsibility. Mr. Chase, Chase never claimed to do anything he didn't. I, I just wanted to clear his good name. He did assist the police on scene. He instructed his wife to call 911, and he assisted the officers get up, getting up the embankment. So again, I just wanted to clear his good name. The fault lie entirely on the police department. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is item four, requests. Item 4A is a request to proclaim May 21st through 27th, 2017 as National Public Works Week in Wayne. Move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Gabriel, supported by Councilman Sutton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Would you like me to read the resolution? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, whereas from the beginning of this, whoa, I'm on the wrong resolution. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Whereas the public work services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work systems and programs such as water, sewer, streets and highways, public buildings, and solid waste collection. And whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services. And whereas the quality of effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction, is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials. And whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitudes and understandings of the importance of this work they perform. Now, therefore, be it resolved in the city of Wayne that all citizens and civic organizations should acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public works personnel make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Thank you. Is Mr. Mr. Queen, could you please um, let the gentlemen at DPW and the women know how greatly we appreciate all that you do, especially under the situation where, you know, shorthanded and they're doing more with less. The next item is item 4B, a request from Wayne Main Street to hold a food truck and fun day Saturday, June 24th, 2017 from 11 to 4 at Derby's Alley, which is 34824 Michigan Avenue West. Move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Gabriel, supported by Councilman Sutton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The next item is added item 4C. This is to request to proclaim May 14th through 20th, 2017 as National Police Officers Week in Wayne. Move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Racy, supported by Councilman Gabriel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And would the clerk read the resolution, please? Yes. Whereas from the beginning of this nation, law enforcement officers have played an important role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms which are guaranteed by the Constitution and in protecting the lives and property of our citizens. And whereas through constant application of new procedures and techniques, such officers are becoming more efficient in their enforcement of our laws. And whereas it is important that our people know and understand the problems, duties, and responsibilities of their police departments and the necessity for cooperating with them in maintaining law and order. And whereas it is fitting and proper that we express our gratitude for the dedicated service and courageous deeds of law enforcement officers and for the contributions they have made to the security and well-being of all our people. And whereas by a joint resolution approved October 1st, 1962, by President Kennedy, the Congress has requested to designate May 15 of each year as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the calendar week during which such May 15th occurs as Police Week. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved in the City of Wayne that all citizens and civic organizations should recognize the dedicated service of police officers to their communities, and in doing so, have established for themselves an enviable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of all citizens. Thank you. And Lieutenant Strong, if you also would just let everybody in the police department know how greatly we do appreciate all that they do and how every day they do put their lives on the line on the line to protect the citizens and the visitors of this community of Wayne. Absolutely. Thank you. Next item is item five, site plans. <coughs> item 5A is site plan 2017-03 for H&N Auto Sales at 36110 Michigan Avenue West. Move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Racy, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor Will. Yes. I just have a few concerns um, with the size of the property regarding um, the vehicles, how many vehicles will be on there, and where will the patrons be parking that uh, visit the location? I could, I could go through a little bit of the site plan for you. Okay. <clears throat> plan itself uh, is here. This is Michigan Avenue on the uh, south side, Pershing to the east. And again, this is the former taxi town property. And they'll be occupying a 1,735 square foot building. And they'll have parking for 16 vehicles on site. Also, a uh, part of the ordinance regarding used auto sales is that they have to have a designated area for customer parking. 650 square feet of that, and then they have to have 1,300 square feet of display area for vehicles. That is a, a city ordinance, it's also a state law that they have those minimum requirements for that parking. And so, again, if you can equate 650 square feet as approximately three and a half parking spaces, it was required by law for them to have. So they've identified these 16 parking spaces here. Uh, I assume they will be doing uh, parking from the building going back for customers. They will have the display in the front. Um, how they break it up is not up to us as long as they do meet the requirements of that ordinance. Uh, they can't park in, their, in the uh, adjacent neighborhoods on the streets. Um, I know that is, could be an issue. Mm -hmm. It is an issue at some of our other locations. Um, and then, of course, they are adjacent to a municipal parking lot. Uh, the ordinance says that if you're within 300 feet to a municipal parking lot, you don't have to have any parking actually at your location you can utilize the municipal parking lot but since this is a, a use that's in the b3 zoning district but it is a use that has um, in chapter 12888 it's called supplementary supplemental regulations we have those additional requirements that they have to provide parking on okay. their site also so um, they're going to of course utilize this area for display and then here for the parking of their customers Okay. Mayor Rowe. Yes. Are there any concerns with the owner uh, with this um, self car wash next door with regards to parking concerns there? Um, well, the, uh, the owner is present actually. While, while Abbas is uh, representing the site plan, he and his <coughs> father. Okay. Um, but they, they won't be able to park on their parking. Is that what you mean? Well, my concern would be that uh, patrons may, because there's not enough parking there, that they may be using the. Um, Self car wash to do, to do so. It's not next to it. Well, um, it is it is next to it, um, but they're not allowed to park on other people's property. If the if the car wash owner does notice it's a problem, he will be able to contact a towing agent and have those vehicles removed from the site. I just so, like to but see. But I mean, I would assume they would have some communication yes, of understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, because these things do happen. The car wash, uh, it is not attended. Right. But the gentleman does come a couple times a day. Um, they do keep it clean at the mm -hmm. car wash. I mm -hmm. do know that. Yes. Um, and so if there is an issue, I do know who he is, and he would call me quickly. <laughs> I assume as much. But okay. um, if there are, is an issue, I will discuss it with Mr. Abbas. So. Just to keep okay. peace in the family. Yes. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? No? Okay. And uh, Mr. Abbas, um, could you step to the podium, please? Uh, you understand the conditions that were stated by the Planning Commission 
Yes, I do. Okay. And you have, have any questions about them at all? Not at all. <laughs> okay. Well, you've already been cleaning up the, the lot, so it's starting to look a little bit nicer. And welcome to the community. And uh, I hope you're a, a good neighbor to those that live on that street. Thank you. I'll do my best. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Osborne, did you have a question? What is the setback that these vehicles are going to be displayed for sale uh, from Michigan Avenue in reference to just like we have a previous business there that's doing business which is the car wash so what is the setback and uh, I'm sorry to say I'm gonna say it here we go another another used car lot I've asked many times because you don't have because we don't have an ordinance and we can just keep on selling these so because we don't have it would you sit down and see if you can put a moratorium on used car lots i mean it's just every place you go it's a used car lot they say you can't do it because it hasn't been rezoned well could you take that back to your planning commission and that's that being but in regards to the uh, the uh, parking I'm interested in that because I would like to see if I was the owner of that car wash I wouldn't want to see my view obstructed so it should be set back and also does the building meet the requirement is there a building on on that used car lot that meets the re requirement for the state law I can answer those yes questions. yes uh, first of all the ordinance requires that there's a 10-foot setback that 10, 10 foot setback has to include landscaping which it does show on the plan mm -hmm. and you all received a copy of the plan mm -hmm. uh, in regards to land use uh, this is the first zoning lot in the city in downtown that will permit a use as used cars everywhere else it is actually prohibited from Pershing going east to about 4th Street okay. for the most part when we did a rezoning a number of years ago to the B5 uh, we had talked about extending it to the railroad at that time but when we looked at that taxi town was the use there and then the um, car wash was located directly west it would have created two non-conformities in the ordinance when you do a rezoning you do try to keep as much conformity to the ordinance and also would unfairly play into the property owners rights to take away those rights of what they have enjoyed by creating a non-conformity because it, if it gets listed as a non-conforming land use that is grandfathered there are certain requirements that if there's a destruction mm -hmm. they can't rebuild also if there's a vacancy they would lose the right to operate the same business there's a number of things that creating a non-conformity does do and so when we did the rezoning we did stop it at Pershing uh, with the hope that something would happen there um, they are planning to do a significant investment in mm -hmm. the property and uh, comply with all the downtown regulations because the downtown regulations start at the railroad track right. and go east. Okay. Uh, so um, we do hope that, but that is kind of uh, our take on the land use. It is a permitted use. We do have to obey the, la the laws and the ordinance of the city to uh, allow this use to occur there. Okay. And then the last question, <laughs> I forget. Um, it, um, oh, the, the, the office, office of the office, building, yeah. yes. Um, they have to have, actually the law says you only have to have 150 square feet of office space. They do comply with that, and they will be doing vehicle repair in the two bays at that location also. Okay. So. All right. Then. Okay. Mayor Rowe. Yes. I'd like to say, yes, could you clarify the, um, the aesthetics of the downtown, um, of the facet on the outside exterior that would, would also apply and comply with this building as well because it is in the downtown district? Yes. Um, again, the requirements of the downtown ordinance state that uh, they, they can't leave it as it is. It's just painted cinder block at this time. And they're proposing to make alterations to the building where they're going to have a stacked stone to the belt, four feet. We call that to the belt. And then actually from the belt going up to the cornice is going to be a new uh, stucco system on the building. They're going to close up the old restroom doors on the east facade, the west facade, they're closing up window there, closing up a window at the rear, and they're going to be applying that. Uh, stucco is a permitted use, mm -hmm. is a permitted, <coughs> permitted facade. 
treatment in the fact that it is a natural system. It is not a dry fit system, so dry fit is styrofoam. Mm -hmm. This will not be, it will actually be applied to the block. There is a system that goes with that. So with the stack stone and then the uh, uh, stucco to the, to the top of the cornice, the cornice can be an ornate trim, and you can see here, this is the facade that we will see from Michigan Avenue. This is the rounded corner of the building. Uh, also, some of the improvements uh, at the location, of course, we've got the landscaping, and then uh, this uh, curb cut on Pershing is too close to Michigan Avenue, and that will be closed, grassed in, a sidewalk <laughs> will be there, and they will be only utilizing the service or alleyway entrance at the rear. Uh, they'll be doing uh, fixing up the wall along the back, the, gar the garbage dumpster enclosure, all those things will be done. Um, I think that in the end, um, we have applied the ordinances that are in place. It will be an improvement to that area. Mm -hmm. okay. Amira, one more yes. question. Yes. Will that antenna, um, antenna tower in the rear still be remaining there, or is that going to be removed? Or what purposes of it? Uh, the antenna should be coming down. It was actually for radio controlled cabs. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank Mayor, you. Mayor, if I yes. may. Uh, Matt, you had mentioned that uh, by law we have to approve these. Is that what you mentioned? It is a use that is permitted. We can't deny the use. Okay. So I'd just like to make a comment for the record, mm -hmm. Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, Certainly. I see the reason for approving this. However, I do not agree with the use. I think we do have way too many used car lots. And truthfully, I think some of them actually should be eliminated. Um, unlike Troy, which has that motor mall, those are all brand new cars, nicer uh, dealership, so to say. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the used car <clears throat> capital or the used car motor, motor mall. Um, but that's kind of my two cents. I would like to see something else there. Thank you. Mayor, Anyone else? Mayor Rowe. Yes. In all due respect, um, I think that's a, a, a perspective that perspective perspective that we've had of this community in the past that we are mostly made up of bars and um, uh, auto sales and the fact really is is that we are becoming and are a much more diverse uh, business community than than we uh, seem to think or feel. Um, we just need to look beyond uh, that past perspectives and look into the future and looking around us we're seeing more restaurants, more uh, entertainment spots, uh, more uh, novelty shops uh, and so forth uh, uh, popping up left and right. We're on a roll. So uh, we're, we're, we're putting that perception behind us. And uh, I think this is a, an asset to our downtown, particularly with the facet uh, improvements that it's creating. You know, the visual, the visual of coming through our city is very important to us marketing. And they're, they are helping us to provide that. And... Um, with that, uh, I, and, and, and I just I just wanted to make that comment because I think that needs to be cleared up. We need to put some of these uh, old ways of thinking behind us uh, and, and look forward and, and, and look with a different set of glasses here that Wayne is changing. Okay, thank you. Mayor. Yes, um, Councilman Racy. Mayor, what was the owner's name? Okay. Um, Y.E.L. Abbas. Okay, Y.E.L., I just want to th thank you for your investment in our community um, I I know that there's been people said things about the auto sales but I've talked about this at council meetings I've talked about a DDA something that's not changing in our community however I do think we can make it into an asset there's people that come from miles and miles and miles and they come to Wayne just for that instead of taking and down downplaying what these used car dealers have have contributed to the city and make them into a, a, to make it bad let's make it into something positive they they've invested their money in our community they pay taxes in our community and they work harder very hard for their money and let's start, stop attacking our business owners and figure out ways to make them successful because we're all in this together and we can make this better together, but just saying that, you know, just get rid of everybody, that's not, that's not fair. And uh, I wanna thank you for your investment in our community. Okay. Yes. Uh, just to uh, clear my comment, cause it looks like it might've been taken out of context. Uh, I don't uh, wanna say I'm not supportive of business owners in our community. It's just I don't agree with the multiple uses 
of used car lots. So again, I would support any business in the community. However, I don't have to agree with the number of uses of different uh, businesses in the city. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Gabriel. Yes. You need to sit up front, Victor. In clarifying, uh, to sum up his last remark, Mr. Matt uh, Miller, he stated that it was for a used car lot, and then I heard a slow thing, and uh, also a repairs. Mm -hmm. Could you, did I hear right? Yes, yes. So, first of all, like last meeting, it was for a used car lot, and now it's a used car lot, shh, quiet, uh, repair facility. Okay, if it's a repair facility, is it a designated Secretary of State uh, licensed facility going to be? Actually, part of the used car sales ordinance and state law says that they have to have a repair facility on their location or they can contract with somebody outside of their business in order to do so. Um, they're choosing to do it all in-house. Mm -hmm. So they will have a licensed facility for used car and for the repair of vehicles. Okay. Um, that is part of their requirement. It's actually one of the boxes we have to check stating that they've met their zoning and municipality requirements that they have an agreement with a repair facility if they don't have one on site or they have one on site. Mm -hmm. okay. You've okay. seen that building, it really could do you think that could take care of a couple of vehicles in there? There are two bays. There's in the two vehicle. bays there now. Well, good luck to good luck okay. to it all. Okay. As as I, I'm just opposed to used car lots and the extra ones. So if you take a walk or a bike down Michigan Avenue and you can go east or west, just look at them. And then uh, there are bokus to some some of the lots. They're very good. Mm -hmm. but then look at the next ones. They are created, they are nothing but blight. Mr. Ramsey had a long time in a court order to get rid of one and then two. These are blight. They, they say they're going to sell a little car. We got one in Vinoy and Glenwood. He said, I'm just going to repair cars and I'm only going to do a half a blacktop. He told you that three years ago. Look at the business today. Degraded. Take a walk down there, get on your bicycles. I'll give you a ride down there and I'll show you. And uh, play by play 3D. And it doesn't look as good as you say, Mr. Thank Miller. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Welcome to the community, sir. The next is item 5B. This is site plan number 2017-04. This is the Bay Dune Save a Lot redevelopment at 34610 Michigan Avenue West. And maybe I could alleviate some questions. I'll go through the plan first. Yeah. Is that okay? That's fine. Great, thank you. Um, Ziad El Baba is uh, representing Mr. Bay Dune. He is the engineer for the project. And uh, I've been working with him throughout the whole mm -hmm. project for this. Uh, this is, uh, we'll refer to it as either Save a Lot or Farmer Jack. Uh, However you'd like to do so, I guess, to date myself. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, on Michigan Avenue, 2nd Street, 3rd, St. Mary's Church is here. Uh, this is for the complete redevelopment of the 24,427 square foot building. Uh, it will involve uh, reconfiguring the parking lot to 84 vehicles, installing landscaping, <clears throat> removing the outdated pole sign, installing two monument style signs on the location here on 2nd Street and 3rd Street along Michigan Avenue. Uh, given that they have uh, more than 300 linear feet of frontage, they can have two signs at this, this location. Uh, the sign is also included in your packets. It is online. This is the monument style sign with indication for a number of units for a shared signage at the location. Uh, the facade renovation will include the uh, east, west, and south elevation. Uh, I'll kind of focus on the south elevation. Uh, this is where we have that uh, kind of merry-go-round scallop along the front there. Um, and this is going to be a re-renovation of that facade uh, with the brick 
here. And then what it, they have done is they've kind of taken the brick and then they've done design in the brick, uh, herringbone design, a soldier course along the top and the bottom. The soldier course is that stacked brick along mm -hmm. the front. Uh, they're going to be installing lights. They're going to do the gooseneck style lights in the downward fashion. And they're going to be preparing the inside of the building for tenants. They don't have any tenants lined up at this time, but Mr. Beydoun is making these improvements to attract a tenant to go into this space. There's 24,000 square feet. Uh, it can be broken up into many fashions um, as you go along there. They could be individual units, you know, 20, 40 feet wide, uh, or, you know, one large anchor and then some smaller, uh, as it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, it is in the B5 zoning district. It allows for a myriad of uses um, in, that, in that district. It doesn't permit any automotive related uses, used cars, gas stations, uh, anything like that. Automotive bump and paint, automotive repair is not a permitted use in the downtown area. Um, they're also going to be doing a lot of work on the Sim Street side. That seems to be where we get a lot of complaints is that Sim Street side is forgotten, I think, by the current owner. Mm -hmm. um, and he is going to be, of course, painting all of that and then fixing this uh, back area where the dumpster and service area is and that fence uh, is going to be fixed. Uh, back here, they're going to do some landscaping improvements where there's just no, nothing actually. Um, uh, when the Salvation Army was there, trucks used to deliver to that back mm -hmm. corner and it wrecked the right of way and the curbing there. They'll be doing some repairs there. And again, um, the staff did, did review this. They found 12 conditions. Um, they have met on these plans, though, all of the downtown regulations um, that we have in the ordinance, and they're going to be making a significant investment. Um, as, as I've talked to Mr. Baydoon and I talked to the Planning Commission, I'll tell you also, my hope is that he can actually utilize more space at this location. Um, this is a parking lot out front. Um, they do have the ability to possibly in, uh, put a couple outlot buildings there at the zero setback, something like that to uh, help that space, help attract more people, make it more pedestrian friendly along here. We do have curb lane parking mm -hmm. uh, so that we will be able to accommodate some outlot buildings there. Uh, the ordinance does allow for it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Mr. Baydoun, of course, is happy about that um, because he can utilize often those further out spaces aren't utilized for parking anyway. Mm -hmm. um, he could maybe use it, utilize it for rentable space. So that's not what we're here today, but I did talk to the Planning Commission about it. I wanted to tell you about that also, that it is a possibility. I've talked to him about that possibility, and he's mulling it over, mm -hmm. um, but he is looking for tenants, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Mayor o, Yes. if I could ask questions. Uh, is it possible for that building to be um, actually divided up more so that there's actually stores facing Sim Street? It, it is possible that you could, you do have, they do have frontage on both sides of the of Michigan Avenue and Sims. They can front there also um, if you could break it up somehow. Um, I think it's going to go to what they consider a white box, so mm -hmm. anything will be possible. Okay. At that time. And then I was also just just for the record is regarding the parking and on Sundays with St. Mary's that uh, there's an understanding about being considerate once that does start. Get, become thriving uh, retail there that there's going to be respect from the parishioners at St. Mary's uh, for the businesses there so that they have available parking for their patrons as well. Yes, uh, we did talk about that at the Planning Commission. It often is used as not even overflow parking. I think it's kind of convenient yeah, parking right. mm -hmm. for St. Mary's because the entrance is on the west side of St. Mary's for the most part and a lot of people always want to park the closest spot to the door. Mm -hmm. um, but as as I discussed before at the Planning Commission, is that uh, when this was in full operation as Farmer Jack, Century Drugs, a dry cleaner, uh, the church actually had no parking. Mm -hmm. um, there was no parking at all. And there is now a parking lot at the back of St. Mary's Church, which sometimes doesn't have all the vehicles. They have them closer to. Um, they would just have to enter at the back at Haney Hall or something, mm -hmm. come through to the church. Um, but Mr. Baydoun does, does know this exists. He knows all about it. He wants to be a good neighbor. Um, if it does start to interfere with the, the businesses, mm -hmm. then it'll be an issue. Right. And then we'll have to address that. But he is aware of that. The church is aware of it also. Uh, so hopefully they'll be able to get along. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, what is the wish of council? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. 
been moved by Councilman Porter and supported by Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Um, any further questions? Yes. Uh, Zayad, um, I just wanted you. If you to could step up to the podium, please, sir. Thank you. I really. I just wanted to say to. to to go back to Mr. Baydoon, thank you for the investment in the community. I know he, he owns um, a couple school. buildings in the town Dorsey already. School builder, yes. mm -hmm. And so he and what what he's done with those buildings has been amazing oh, to, to begin with. And I, I it's great to see somebody that's because somebody that's in town reinvesting in our downtown, and uh, that's the kind of people it's going to take to make Wayne grow. And uh, I really I really appreciate uh, what he's doing, um, adding. What he's doing with breaking that up, I think, is going to make that a lot more successful. Uh, the new facing on it, great. I, I just, it, it just makes it makes a big difference in um, his commitment to, to come back and do quality stuff. I, I, I really appreciate it. I ask you to pass that along to him. Well, well, actually, what he did with Dorsey School, actually, uh, the entire building was empty. Mm -hmm. uh, he filled it up. Uh, he gave him a great deal, and that building employs over 60, 70 people throughout. And it's, you know, it's a um, a uh, school of different uh, aspects uh, from uh, nursing to mechanic to uh, electrical, all kinds for any technical school. And he has done really magic to, uh, to the parking with Mr. Miller's help, of course. Uh, we, that uh, school is really, really going. And they have a long lease uh, on this building. And we intend to do the same thing on this one too. And because he was here at the planning commission yes, meeting and I talked to him for a second, he mentioned that he, that he's planning on having this done. He's hoping to have this by August, having this piece in place. Oh, he, he's, he goes forward. He, yeah, he put very aggressive. He, he, he's yes. very a very good uh, businessman and he knows uh, what to do. Yeah, that, that's great. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And um, sir? Yes, you're you're familiar with the 12 conditions that have been placed there we for the planning commission. With that. Actually, I'm going to the building to figure uh, the uh, the existing structure to make sure it's adequate and other things. Of course, we have to apply for permit right. for those items, and we go from there. Okay. Well, thank you, and welcome to the community. And I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product. It's going to be a much much welcome improvement to the downtown area. We'll do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Just real quick, sir. Yes. Uh, do you know how many square foot feet that whole uh, building will be for uh, retail space? Isn't it like 24 or something? 24, 427. How much was it? 24, 427. Yes. Uh, usually, uh, they div divide it into about 60,000 square feet. Uh, they divide it into units, like maybe 2,000 a piece, and they, we keep it uh, like uh, uh, open concept, and then uh, somebody will rent 2,000, 1,000, uh, 5,000. We'll go from there, and uh, we'll see. Okay. Well, thank you but very much. But you see, the st step one is uh, you have to make it attractive so yes, people will come in. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. I'm just very happy about the monument signs. Yes. <laughs> Those are my thing. Okay. Yeah. And who else? Did you have a question, Mr. Uh, I was just going to uh, echo Councilman Racy a little bit, as well as uh, it sounds like currently we don't have any tenants lined up, so I'd like to see maybe some support, not support, um, assistance on Lori's end to uh, think working together as a team to get some good tenants in there but again uh, we appreciate the the huge changes and removing the eyesore that it is now I think it's going to be a great move forward thank you thank you hey, yes just for clarification he he said something I didn't understand here is it going to be divided up so that say whatever four or five uh, stores in that frontage and it's going to be divided long ways are you talking about it's going to be you go into the entrance and it's going to be uh, leased out open air square footage of retail. Is that what my understanding is? No, no it will no. be. They'll have individual entrances. Okay. It should be ribbons. Okay. Uh, similar to many uh, strip malls. Okay, I just wanted a clarification. Okay. I, I, it kind of I misunderstood what he was saying when he started speaking about open air inside. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Hmm? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, and welcome to the community, sir. The next item is item six, public hearing. Item 6A is a public hearing to consider the proposed fiscal year 2017-2018 budget and millage rates. Okay. We have Brian now. Or Brian, do you want to just give us a brief? 
Sure. So thank you for having me back again. Um, <laughs> Can we call Katie up with you too, Brian? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Katie. Thanks. <coughs> for those of you who have not met Katie, she is our new finance director. So the, the budget is, is a culmination of several months of hard work from the finance office, city manager's office, all of your department heads, and uh, yourselves. You've sat through quite a few meetings and lectures from me about what's in it, what should be in it, what's not in it. And uh, you've been very receptive to some very difficult issues that unfortunately the city has to address. And so the culmination of all of this is the, the document that you will be asked to vote on. Uh, the budget results in a deficit of fund balance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just over half a million dollars. Uh, there are quite a few things that are not in the budget, good things that could still happen. Uh, sources of revenue, such as selling of buildings or, or other such things that if they happen, great, maybe the city doesn't finish the year in a deficit, but it's not financially prudent to bank on things that are not closer to sure things. So we are cautiously optimistic that things like building sales might actually occur in this next year, and, and that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but if they're not going to happen, it's only right and transparent that everyone in the community and your bondholders and the state of Michigan and in Wayne County, that everybody knows where the city of Wayne is at. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think you've been vocal, we've been vocal. I think that story is getting out. Mm -hmm. I think people do understand. Um, I know that the, the city is working very hard to correct it. And hopefully this, this budget is the first uh, newest of many steps toward coming out of that fiscal problem. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we will open up the public hearing then to consider the proposed fiscal year 17-18 budget and millage rates. Uh, any questions from those in the audience? Yes. Just remember, state your name and your address. Jeff Wild, Newberg. Um, when we started the, the talks about the retiree health care it was said that uh under the plan that uh was proposed in the budget that or, or extending it whatever it was that we would have a five-year uh, uh surplus in the fund balance so we voted on uh on a resolution and, and went with the program it is the surplus five-year projection is that now gone does it still exist is there anything no th that's a very good question uh it's not off the table if the dozen or so assumptions that were listed in that projection actually do come true so retiree health care was a big piece of it and so yes check that one off the list that one is accomplished but there were several others uh, changes to the pension system, uh, finalizing all of the contracts with lower multipliers, sale of several buildings throughout the city, sale of uh, the fire truck. Uh, I, I forget the others, but there is about 12 or 14 different items on that list, if you'll recall. All of them have to happen, or other things, other good things that we haven't thought about, or. You know, some of the, the expenditure increases that we baked in there, hopefully they don't happen at high, as high of a rate. And if all of those things happen, and if the city keeps its eye on the ball, it just keeps working, keeps your feet moving forward, it is still attainable. Hopefully all of those things break our way. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. We will close the public hearing then for the budget. The next item is item 6B. This is to approve the fiscal year 2017-18 budget and millage rates. Move to approve. Support. It's been moved by Council um, Mayor Pro Tem Miller and supported by Councilman Racy. Um, I would just like to bring to the attention of the council on uh, page 19 
uh, you'll see at the very bottom the senior services and we had uh, only uh, the final amount was fifteen thousand dollars which was for the transfers from the community development block grant funding uh, we are going to add in uh, seven thousand dollars and uh, continue with the senior program at this time since we still uh, are, have not finalized any um, agreements to move forward with hype taking over the senior services program so until that can be done uh, we will still have our senior services program okay so that would only affect the uh, fund balance on page four the estimated fund balance deficit for June 30th of 2018 instead of the uh, 534,065 it's going to be 541065 okay are there any questions from members of council okay, it's been moved and supported to pass the, uh, the budget as the resolution states on page one all in favor aye. aye opposed no okay okay motion carries okay the next item is item seven ordinances and amendments item 7a is the second reading and adoption of ordinance 2017-02 Chapter 210, Animal Shelter and Licensing Fees. Move to approve. Support. It's been moved by Mayor Pro Tem Miller, supported by Councilman Gabriel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Next item is item 7B. This is the first reading of Ordinance 2017-03, Chapter 1282, Parking. Okay. Yes. Right. Ms. Goyne. Good afternoon, Mayor, or good evening, I should say, Mayor and members of the Council. Um, we're bringing this back before you this evening. Uh, as you all know, I've spoken with each of you. Uh, my spiel today is more so for the residents at home as well, so they understand what we're doing. Uh, Planner and myself, our entire economic development team, sat together and discussed this ordinance after the last meeting. So I do want to apologize that we didn't uh, clarify exactly what we were doing to all of you before the vote. I was put on the spot and asked a question if the ordinance would affect businesses, and I had to answer yes, that it would. However, uh, as, I know, as I said, I was caught off guard, so it made it appear as I was not supporting our planner, and that was not the case at all. What we're going to do is we're going to bring, we have brought the same ordinance back to you because truly that is what it should be. In the ordinance, if a business comes in and they do not have the ability to pave an entire lot, the administration does have the ability, the planner, the engineer, city manager, to work with the owner of the property and make a recommendation from the, for the phasing of the paving of the project. That would then be made to the Zoning Board of Appeals and it would be up to them to make sure that that, that is put in place. Now, if a business owner flat out does not want to pave, they still have the right to go before the Zoning Board of Appeals and ask for a variance. One of the things that, that we all do know is we do not want gravel in our downtown. Um, so I'll give you an example. There's a lot on Michigan Avenue behind Bigby. If that lot was purchased, certainly that lot, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, would have to follow the Wayne County stormwater requirements as well as making sure that they pave that lot. So I did want to clear that, clarify that for that for everybody at home as well as all of you today. And um, I look forward to having your support and I'll take any questions or uh, if you'd like to ask um, our planner, he'd be happy to take questions as well. Okay. I'm just gonna make a comment, the mayor. Will. Yes. You know what, behind Big uh, Could we have a, a motion first? I move to approve. Okay. Support. Okay, Mayor I, I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I just wanna say that that's a very good example of what we would be allowing that is occurring behind uh, Big B's right now, okay? Uh, that whole parking, uh, the gravel area and everything like that. So this will kind of uh, establish some conformity um, and, and really it's uh, environmentally uh, conscientious by doing so, okay? 
because of the runoff, excess, and all that. So um, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Um, and I do have one uh, apology to make to uh, Tire Stop. Uh, their lot is not gravel. It's our street that's all gravel and has all the potholes in it. So uh, shame on us, and I do apologize to Tire Stop for my previous comment. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, the, the lot you speak of, uh, Lori, back in the 90s, the city of Wayne asked them, told them that they had to pave it back then, and they never did. And I'm not saying because you weren't here but they've been asked to do that in the past and it's never happened. So it's just something, because I, I, you know, I don't, I don't even know if Matt was here at the time when that happened. I wasn't. So, so I, 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 I remember, because I worked for the company that, that owned that lot and they were told that they needed to do that and they'd let it go and that really bothered me that that was going on. Um, so I, I support, you know, having paved lots in our downtown for sure. I, you know, I, I, my, my biggest concern is that, that we look at you know, and I'm fine with this, but if there's issues like like by the dump, if, if it doesn't make any sense that nobody's going to be there and it doesn't change anything, I mean, I think we, I'd like the staff to be looking at all those different things. If there's Absolutely. reasons why and it makes it prohibitive to them, we need to look at that very closely and make sure that we're not hindering business if we go That with is our this. goal. So, okay. Okay. Any further questions? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Eric Clearman. I'm over in Winifred. Mm -hmm. On East Michigan Avenue, we've got a number of used car dealers that use the dirt roads next to them as parking lots. Is there any way we could get them to pave those or not do that? That has nothing to do with this right now, if you could bring that up at the end. Sure. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? No? All right then. It's been moved and supported for the first reading. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next item is item 8A. This is the, I'm sorry, item 8, communications and reports. Item 8A, April 30th, 2017, revenue and expenditure report. Worship Council. Receive and file if Receive no objection. Receive and file. Okay. Thank you. The next item is item 9, general items for consideration. Item 9A is to approve calling a special study session for Tuesday. May 23rd, 2017 at 7 p.m. and canceled the special study session scheduled for Tuesday, May 30th, 2017. Okay, um, all of you had been inf informed about this previous to this council meeting. Uh, basically, uh, because uh, Tuesday, May 30th, it is the day after Memorial Day, and then also uh, the city manager will be attending the Mackinac Policy Conference uh, at her own expense, and she will not be available either. So uh, we felt it was good to uh, move it to the 23rd if there was no objections, and I did not receive any from anyone. So um, no objections. Okay, Can I have a motion. Move approval. approval. Yep. Move okay. approval. It's been moved by Mayor Pro Tem Miller and supported by Councilman Racy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. The next item is item 9B. This is to approve a payment to the Michigan Municipal League in the amount of $7,117 for the 2017-18 membership dues to be paid from the City Council memberships and dues budget. Okay. Um, wish of Council? Mayor Rowe, I, I must speak my thoughts on this one. Um, and I understand uh, the importance that the Municip Michigan Municipality League uh, provides us, um, but I find it very difficult to uh, approve this at this time, but rather to suspend this um, affiliation at this time um, because of the situation we're in. There's many communities that don't have Michigan Municipal League. You're, we're able to be able to uh, seek these informations. We're able to attend these meetings without being a um, a uh, member at, as well, and it just has to be understood. Right, quite frankly, right now we just can't afford. Uh, uh, making this um, this um, membership fee at this time, and I'm using the word suspended because hopefully that we can get back with them. But at this time, financially, I I I, I would urge the council to uh, consider it. Okay. Anyone else have any comments? Do we need a motion before discussion? Uh, yes, we should have a motion. Yes, thank you. Could I have one then? A motion. Motion to approve. Support. 
It's been um, moved by Councilman Porter, supported by Councilman Racy. Is there any discussion or comments further? Do you have? No? Okay. Mayor? Yes. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem spoke of receiving all the benefits of the Michigan Municipal League without paying the dues. Uh, since you were a big part of it, Mayor, I would ask you to comment on that, please. Yes, uh, you can oh. go on the. I think he was oh, talking he, to her. He, he was. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's I'm okay. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, yes, it, it is, in my mind, it, it would not be a very um, smart move on our part not to join this and continue being uh, members of the Michigan Municipal League. Granted, uh, we can attend and we pay a non member rate if we do attend. Um, but the information that they can provide us is really, uh, I would say, it's a priceless. Uh, if you look at all the lobbying that they do for us, as it states in the letter here, uh, efforts were done at the state level to eliminate the downtown development authorities. And they went to bat and they were up there knocking on doors, talking to state reps and state senators, uh, stating the value of having the downtown development authorities. Um, the dark stores where you have cities that have the huge big box stores like the Lowell's and the um, uh, eight, uh, Home Depot's and uh, Walmart's and such. Those <coughs> stores, that is still, those uh, appeals are still going on at the, Nash, at the uh, Tax Tribunal Council, uh, especially it is uh, having a great impact on some of the communities up in the Upper Peninsula where um, they have left like stores the size of Walmart's vacant and they have deed restrictions on them. So the cities have this vacant property and now the owners of those stores are saying they don't have to pay the taxes because it's an empty store, it's an empty box. And so they go to the tax tribunal. So that has a huge effect on the uh, economics of communities. Uh, it even affects our city to the north of us, Westland, uh, Macy's is empty now. Um, so that has an effect that is a, a dark store. Uh, similar to their city hall that they have that was considered a dark store. Uh, they were lucky enough they, they had the funds to be able to purchase the, um, I believe it was Circuit City, and convert it into their um, city hall. But uh, the lobbying we can't pay for. We cannot, we just don't have money for lobbyists. I go up as much as I can, I talk to our representatives, I you know, sit in, in front of some committees, but um, we, we don't have the money to pay for these lobbying efforts. Their biggest right now push is the, the state fiscal um, crisis that we, they have put all of us, uh, the local communities in. They are big proponents of it. They, you know, have, they have not joined the lawsuit that we are members of, but they are supporting it and providing all the information that they possibly can to the attorneys that are working on that for us as communities. Um, I feel that uh, it is something that is, it, it's money well spent. It is the only thing really in our budget other than our salaries. I mean, it's, it's, um, I would pay it myself, but I, I, I don't make that much money to pay it, so I, I can't afford to pay it. But uh, I think it is something that as a taxpayer, I have no problem with my tax dollars going towards this. It is important for us to have that representation up there. And even they have uh, the group, the municipal attorneys, uh, and I believe Fossen and Baum is a member of that organization. We have, um, we get our municipal directories we have there are a, a lot of things that they are worthwhile to us so with that um, I will uh, yes yes mr. Roberts Thank you, yes I just like to ask a question uh, I'd actually like to make a short statement. It seems to me that they're going to do these, uh, they're going to be doing these lobbying efforts with or without our money. The question I have is, is what have they actually done for the city of Wayne? Because we have this discussion every year around budget time, and every year it's 7, 8, whatever it is. 
but we're scraping. And uh, are we going to get seven thousand, eight thousand dollars worth of our money back this year? I mean, it's nice to have the option of going somewhere, picking up a phone, or, or, or being able to have resources. But um, if we should opt out for a year or two, are those resources still not going to be there? I mean, are we still going to be able to pick up a handbook and find the phone numbers we need and all these other things? And we've got enough connections all over, and they're still going to be in Lansing lobbying. What are they doing for the city of Wayne? They have provided us with, especially myself, with a lot of assistance when it comes dealing with um, matters of uh, legal issues. I go to them and talk to them. They have helped me in other areas. Is this Just over and above our yes. our city attorney? Yes. Is that all? There, is that the only thing you can cite? No. Madam Mayor? They provide training. They provided training for all of us, all of the newly elected officials here. They held it in the council chambers here when they were all newly elected and provided that. They do have classes that they offer. Unfortunately, you know, well, in this, in some cases, Councilman Gabriel did take sure. one of their training classes for a weekend. Uh, Councilman Miller has done that. So, um, yes, the training is, is of value. Every four years or every two years or whatever, when are we Well, you know, they have training available all year long. When will we reelect again? Three years or is it two years now? Uh, next year we have elections. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Are you okay? Yes. You know, that, that's a good question, and I know we do go back and forth on this with regards to lobbying. You know, I am I know I've been questioned, are, are you a lot? I'm not a registered lobbyist, so I can't lobby, but I do, I can approach, just like the mayor and the council, we can approach um, the different state representatives and others. I think the thing with the MML, that I find of value, whether it matters or not, is that um, when we needed to really get inside the governor's office to get to some of the people that um, are helping us treasury-wise in some of those areas and probably put the pressure on, they stepped up. Um, when we needed to have a say-so with regards to the governor's strategy team that's talking about pensions and health care, we were not really um, getting any acknowledgement um, or help. So the mayor Rowe called the MML and they got us a meeting with John Walsh, who's heading up that whole effort so that we could have a one-on-one -on -one with him to explain that our issues are very different from everybody else's right now and explain the things that we're doing. The other thing is, is that um, unfortunately some representatives and senators, both federal, state, unless you're from their community, they don't really wanna hear from you. And the one thing is, is that a lot of those state representatives and senators are also heads of some of the committees that are very important to us, finance committees, appropriations committees, and others. And sometimes you need a little push from somebody to get you in front of the, get an audience with these folks, because a lot of them play territory, they're very territorial. I've experienced that on many occasions. It, it doesn't make sense because I think that you're paid by all the taxes of all the people in Michigan, so it doesn't matter where you're located, especially when you're on these committees. But they have helped us with access quite a bit when we were kind of pushed to the side because I think there's a lot of there, there's a lot of pushback on you know some of these legislators they don't want to deal with cities like Wayne right now they don't want to hear from us they don't want to hear our problems um, I know Mr. Porter joined into that lawsuit with regards to the revenue sharing they're fighting like heck right now on uh, trying to get us our revenue sharing I mean they are behind this they are pushing so is it worth seven thousand dollars I mean you know I, I wish they would let us have it for free I mean I don't mayor I think we could certainly ask them for a discount and just see if they would be give us an opportunity to say look we are having some issues right now maybe you could just you know we look at how much we're spending and and you know because they're fighting the fight that we need to win right now to stay on track but I think just it, thank you for allowing me to add my two cents. But, you know, you should be able to contact anybody, but you, see, you just don't get a return call if they're not from your district. So, and, you. and that is very true. I have gone up to Lansing and gotten into senator's offices because I, I am with MML and I'm going there with other members who are also members of MML. So uh, that is very true. It, uh, even when I when we used to belong to the National League of Cities I would go to Washington and you can get into senators and representative offices there when you're going as a representative of the National League of Cities or the Michigan Municipal League otherwise they don't really want to talk to you because you're you can't vote for them in come November so they don't want to waste their time talking to to us so um, I feel it is a very worthwhile, and I will personally call the executive 
uh, tomorrow and see if uh, we can get any type of maybe a 10% discount or something on it. Then can we table this until we get that answer? Yes, we can. Uh, because my, Mayor, yes. my, my, my thing is that we're not the only community fighting about these same things, You're right. okay? And quite frankly, we are below the financial belt safety line. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I would love to be able to be part of that coalition, but we're just not there anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. And there is others in the same boat as we are. Unfortunately, they're gonna to have to hold that flag up while we try to stay afloat. And you know, I would like to at least ask them to give us some consideration and understanding, because we have been members for God knows how long. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yes. And, and and maybe table this and bring it back, and maybe we can come up with maybe a little bit more of understanding about this because I just can't write off the cuff of my uh, cuff here. Just go ahead and approve this in the situation that we're in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and with all due respect, okay. and I have a lot of high regard for the for 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 what they're doing. I've been to their meetings. I've gone to Lansing. Hey, it's great. Thing is, all this information is out there, online. Okay, and, and, and also there's more than just the MML as an avenue of being able to uh, achieve these goals. And that's where I have a, 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 a concern with, you know, do I necessarily need to spend $7,000 in order to be able to achieve these goals that I need to try to achieve and meet? Quite frankly, no, I can't see it. Okay, all right, then uh, the wish of council to table it till the next meeting or? Support. Well, we have a motion yes, on the floor. Yes, yes, I know. Yes. <clears throat> okay, well. It, speaking on this, you know, I made the motion. Mm -hmm. I feel what the Mayor Pro Tem is saying is actually rather funny because, not funny, I don't know what the word is. Uh, if you ask for 10%, that's 70, $710, $711. If the, if the MML representing us is only worth another seven hundred dollars or you know that that is I don't see why we would table it I think we should pass it we have we have passed things that cost us a lot more we've rejected things that we could have made a lot more money on and we're and we're quibbling over seven thousand dollars going to what I feel is a rather good place I, I know I can probably go, go online every time I wish to go and find those things but I just don't see fighting over seven hundred or seven thousand dollars when we passed on so many good opportunities here okay all right we have if, a if, the, if it's the wish of the council I'll okay. I'll pull my motion and yeah. you can table it if you so want okay. but I think it's Any other discussion Okay, it's been moved and supported to pay the $7,117. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Opposed? No. Okay. Motion carries. That's right. The next item is item 9C. This is to approve a resolution to become engaged as a redevelopment ready community. Move approval. Support. It was moved by Councilman Racy, supported by Councilman Gabriel. Any discussion or questions? Yes. yes. Did uh, Lori come up and do a presentation regarding uh, what her efforts have been made? Certainly. On us? Thank you. Uh, good evening again. Uh, this is a requirement of the state of Michigan for communities that have true downtowns that they participate in something called the redevelopment ready community. Uh, our Main Street program, uh, Maxwell, I know he's here somewhere, he and I both have been uh, gone through our first training. Our planner has begun the engagement process by a self-evaluation. Uh, the, the process that we're going to go through, the whole idea is to make us a community that's redevelopment friendly. Um, in the past, we have done quite a few of the things as far as fast tracking permits and things like that, so we're already ahead of ourselves on that. But there are processes in place to do your master plan review, to look at your ordinances, things of that nature. Obviously, the city is uh, and not in a financial shape at this time to do a master plan redo. However, it is a requirement that we become engaged in the process before October. By that, it means that we have completed the self-evaluation, which we were fortunate enough. Uh, the Department of Treasury took the rest of what uh, wasn't finished. Matt did a large portion of it. They finished that for us today. 
The next part is passing this resolution saying that the City of Wayne is willing to go through the process. And then we will be eligible for state incentives and programs that will help attract new business to the City of Wayne. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? No? Okay, it's been moved and supported. Uh, moved by uh, Councilman Racy, supported by Councilman Gabriel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is 9D. This is to approve a professional service agreement with Stantec for repairs to submersible pumps and to update the multi smart pump controller on an emergency basis for an amount not to exceed $30,690 uh, on the EQ basin, I believe. Is this correct? On the EQ basin uh, to be paid from the fiscal year 2016 17 sanitary sewer budget. Okay. Wish of Council? Motion to approve. Or second. Okay, it was, uh, it's been moved by Councilman Porter, supported by Councilman Racy. Any questions? Yes. <coughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Osborne, what was that? Could you have, could you have someone qualified from that department to, for Zantec? or our DPW explain what this is. Uh, professional service agreement, now I'm reading here for repairs to submersible pumps. Mm -hmm. Who owns the pumps? Okay, who owns mm -hmm. the pumps? Uh, so it seems like they need to be taken care of. And to update the multi-start pump controller, okay? Mm -hmm. The multi-start pump controller, where is it located, what is it? How long does it last? We see this name Zantec quite often. Mm -hmm. So who are they? And uh, here we are paying $30,000. You're worried about 7,000. We got, uh, just give and pay $30,000 professional service agreement. I don't know what they're checking. Okay. I don't know where these submersible pumps are. And I'd like to know because if we bought submersible pumps, it's just like this uh, radar giving out our water meter bills here. If uh, they're as good as pro meters, uh, we need some explanation on what they are, and I, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Okay, Mr. Queen will answer your questions. Questions? Questions, yes. Good evening, Mayor, members yes. of Council. Good evening. Um, the repairs that we're referring to, they are for the EQ Basin, which is located down in Josephine Park. Mm -hmm. It's uh, underground, you won't be able to see it. It's a two point, I believe, 2.6 million gallon reservoir that basically um, is, uh, helps out in any types of any sanitary sewer overflows because if the system gets overtaxed sometimes um, it will push it into that basin and um, and that will be a holding tank kind of until it can uh, release it in back into the system when it isn't overloaded. Okay. Um, the, the pumps that are in there are the pumps that actually help to pump that uh, sanitary uh, sewage out of the out of the basin and back into the system. Um, there's, I believe, four pumps is what we were told. Um, two of them right now are in need of repair. And so this is something that, and it's on an emergency basis. So it, uh, the repairs have already been made to the multi-smart, the pump controller, which actually controls the pumps. And it's that's also located down there in the park. Um, there's a building down there that houses all the electronics and everything that control the, the whole uh, system over there for the EQ basin. And um, and so then also pumps have already been uh, removed from the facility over there and they're being worked on as we speak. And so they should be uh, completed here uh, soon. Um, so the work's already being completed and, and is gonna be done here. Um, as far as Stantec, Stantec is an engineering firm that we use quite often because they're one of our, the ones that we trust and we've been working with them for years. They're also, Stantec is also in charge of, I believe the O&M so the operations and maintenance of that facility for us. Somebody has to actually go over there, so they're constantly over there weekly checking on the station, make sure it's uh, operating the way it should be, that the pumps are working. Um, we also just installed a, a SCADA system, which allows us as um, directors, myself, Mike Byton, and some of our foremen to actually look on the SCADA system on our phones and see where the levels are inside the, the station there although Stantec will be the ones responsible for responding to anything that, any uh, type of alarms that it might get or anything like that at the EQ Basin. 
and then they'll take care of any issues or if there's something they need to do, turn a pump on. But for the most part, it's uh, Stantec does take care of all that for okay. us. Now, the EQ Basin, that was put in, what, in the 90s? Uh, yeah, it's about 20 years old almost 20 now. Years old. So there's okay. a lot of repairs that, mm -hmm. that we're finding out because it's a 20-year-old uh, facility that are coming up. We actually have some more that repairs that Stantec has let us know about. Um, but we're going to try and see how we can fund that a different way, maybe um, through grants or things like that. But um, for something of this nature, uh, it's something that needs to be done right away. It's similar, this station here is similar to our our lift station that we have over at Stellwagen and Winifred that um, uh, lifts up sanitary sewage and there's we have three mm -hmm. pumps over there that we have had to have maintained and they usually go sometimes about eleven thousand dollars you're talking to have them pull the pump out take it back to their shop repair it fix the seals anything that's in it and then come back and reinstall those pumps down into the into the station so it's similar to that at the EQ basin they've had to pull these pumps out once they're done fixing them and repairing them they'll Put them back into service. And are there um, are there a lot of Stantex, a lot of engineering firms that do this in the, in, in this area, or are they considered to be um, one of the best? That part I'm I'm not sure. Uh, as far as um, th they're the engineering firm that's been working with us, and they've had the contracts. Let me see. I thought I had that part here. <coughs> I can't remember how long, but they've been on contract with us for quite a while. Um, as far as any other engineering firms, Stantec, I believe, uh, maybe was around when that was mm -hmm. um, put first in, built. So they're familiar with our the, our facility. Okay. All right then. Yeah, I got a question. Yes. So, so where does the sewage go if we don't fix these problems? Where will it go? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have a we'll have backups um, similar to the storm back in August. Um, because of the location, I think it uh, <coughs> plays a part in it as well, that, that overflow basin. Um, so back in August of 14, I think it was, when we had that huge storm that came through as well, um, the, the system gets overtaxed, and so it starts to back up down, down the interceptor, which one of them is down the center of, I believe, the median of Michigan Avenue. And uh, so once that starts to back up, then it will start to back up into homes, which ended up happening. No fault of our own. It was an act of God that when all the rain comes, right. but once it reaches that uh, equalization basin there at Josephine, it starts to dump any other overflows into that system and will hold up to uh, 2.6 million gallons. So you'd say it'd be cheaper to fix it than have the lawsuits when it backs Correct. up. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Thank you. And according to state law, we we were actually ahead of the game when we put that EQ basin in. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then. Yes. Um, what's the life expectancy of these pumps anyways? Mm, if there is none or? That I'm not aware of because it, it all depends. Like we, we, like I said, over at our lift station, we had a pump repaired. It gets down there. It depends on what's being pumped through it sometimes. Um, and it can damage the pump, whatever gets into the system that people are throwing into their toilets or wherever else. Um, and so there's other objects sometimes that get in there. Uh, could be you know clothing sometimes that wraps up inside that those pumps and you may have had it just repaired and then it gets inside there and ends up damaging the pump again so well, how many pumps do we have that prevent backflow from going into our basements and how many pumps yes in the city four of them well it's uh, for this particular EQ basin I believe the my talk to Stan Tech he said there's four pumps in that facility there um, it's and it, it can keep up with you know the flow that's coming into that system there they probably sized it out you know the size of the pump probably to, with how much fluid goes into those uh, to, into that basin do they provide a warranty with the service uh, they do mm -hmm. thank you okay. you're welcome and and the this money is coming out of the sanitary sewer budget which we with our water bills we are constantly putting money in there for maintenance reasons. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right, then. Any other questions? No. Yes, Mr. Oz. Osborne. In his delivery to you, I think he, Mr. Queen, said, and uh, they already repaired it. Yes. Okay. So why do we have it on the agenda that it's coming up 
for you to vote on something to spend money out of your pocket, okay? Got, 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 got a dollar, okay? We can't spend, we already paid for the pumps and it came out of somebody's pocket. They're supposed to be coming here and asking you, hey, my pocket's dry, I need a couple of pumps repaired. That's what it says here. So you got a man coming up here telling you, uh, I repaired the stuff already. So you have, if Zantac sends you the bill for the $30,000 and seven, uh, six ninety, you got to pay it. The it was, invoice is there. It was an emergency basis. It doesn't say that. Yes, it, it does. It says the contract. No, it, right here. It says on the agenda, on an emergency basis. For emergency repairs. You never stated we have an emergency. Have you ever been notified that we have an emergency in Wayne? About some from the DPW department? That we had an emergency with our fillers? No, they the don't. No, that's their job. That's their professional job. I know it's their. And in, in other words, with all the rain that we've had, if they wouldn't have done this, we would have had sewer, sewer water in our basements probably because the pumps had to be repaired. It was an emergency to repair them. For repairs to submersible pumps. Don't know how old they are, how long they last. It's been there for work. over 20 years at least, so that gives you some idea. Good, good. Okay. All right. Any further questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Queen. The next item is item 9E. This is to approve the fiscal year 1718 water and sewer budget and rates. Okay. Uh, what is the wish of council? Move to approve. Okay. It's been moved by um, Mayor Pro Tem Miller, supported by Councilman Racy. Um, Brian. Well, if uh, there's already a motion, I don't need to, to give you a, a, a long diatribe on this, but this is the, the, what the document you have uh, is the result of the model that you commissioned us to create back in the fall. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so with a lot of input from Ed and Mike, uh, we revised the capital outlay projections, uh, took new information or the most recent information from the Great Lakes Water Authority, uh, use the, the current budget that you voted on earlier this evening and rolled it out over the next four years. So finish this year in another four and with the idea that the projected rate increases would be uh, very level and very manageable. Um, if you'll recall a couple years ago, there was a 20% increase that was necessary to kind of jumpstart the rates and get them back on track. Um, Excuse me. We have a presentation going on. Thank you. So the, the, the output from the model uh, suggests that you should pass an increase of 8.1% uh, on water, but only 0.8% on sewer. Altogether, that's 4.5%. But you also have a fixed component to your rate. We're not suggesting any change to the fixed component. And so the actual impact to a resident depends on how much your volume is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in that letter, there is a calculation for two example customers. Uh, these are actual, uh, one is an elected official and one is a department head. But so these are real people, real members of the community. Uh, the family of two based on their usage and the flat fixed fee would have an increase of 3.2% per year. And the family of four with obviously a higher volume of use would have an increase in the first year of 3.6. Uh, and eventually over five years would get up to four. So really you're looking at three to 4% per year for the next four years okay. with a lot of capital improvements baked in as well. So right. um, fairly pleased with, with how this has turned out. Okay. Are there any questions? No? Yes. I think this came up in the past before, but you know when you get your your water bill, and it says water sewage, then it says sewage flat fee or something water, whatever it's called. What exactly 
does that money go towards? Because the only thing I was told by, I think, Wendy Snook, uh, as she said, was that's the that's what we have to pay the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. you know, Brian. You know. Well, that's a good question because uh, there is a lot of uh, misinformation quite often with the fixed fee. But what that fixed fee does is it pays for the cost the city has regardless of how much volume of water is sold and sewage is treated. So the cost to read a meter is the same whether you use a million gallons or zero gallons. But there shouldn't be a cost to read the meter because it goes right to the computer because we had the new well, meters yeah. and stuff. Well, sure, but to print the bill, to send the bill, to collect the money, to do the accounting, to do the management, all of the administrative functions of the water and sewer department. <laughs> so it doesn't include capital outlay, it doesn't include debt service, and it doesn't include the cost of water purchased from GLIWA or the cost of sewage treatment paid to the county. It's the city's internal administrative costs. Okay. Yes. Follow up, Mayor, if I may. Um, is it true that there's a, I think they call it an interceptor that's behind here in Gowdy Park that we receive sewage from like surrounding communities? Is that, is that true? That I. Is there an interceptor? Miss, yes, Mr. Biden, could you have answered that? I was just that? going to say, because yes. if it is, we ought to put a meter on that and start charging these other communities for their, you know, I'm trying to say their right. yes. certain. Mr. Biden can explain that. Madam Mayor, members yes. of the City Council, the uh, sewage that comes uh, through our county is, is taken away uh, by Wayne, or taken through our community, is taken away by Wayne County to Detroit to be treated. And so we have two interceptors that run through our community. One used to carry sewage through Canton. Uh, that one uh, no longer does, so that's kind of a dead end uh, interceptor there. The other one does come from the south out of Romulus, comes through our community. It's a Wayne County system, mm -hmm. um, and it does have the proper deduction meters uh, or meters to measure the flows so that the city is only taking care of its own flows and we're not being charged for other flows. Okay. I appreciate right. that. And just, okay. I'll be real yeah. quick, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, last August, I know there was uh, a lot of residents. I, I, I received a letter from the uh, Wayne County Drain Commissioner mm -hmm. and wasn't uh, squabbling about the special assessment for the creation of a drainage district. Uh, a gentleman did contact me back from Lansing and said that under Michigan statutory law that the any county drainage commissioner can do this mm -hmm. and I was like well I haven't seen any major construction being done you know started in Wayne or any repairs and stuff and I was just basically told well they can do that because essentially statutory law I was like okay well you take you know my I think my assessment was like eight dollars I said but you take eight dollars from people in the dis, you know, that area, mm -hmm. it adds up, you know, nickel and dimes add up. We, got, we can all agree that. But it's just, he, the question he couldn't answer was that, was this going to be an ongoing special assessment for this drainage district that was created? So I'm just wanted to say, council, keep your eyes out. And like Ms. No Serena said about the lobbyists up in Lansing, you mm -hmm. know, the okay. MML, it's just, there's creative accounting practices going on. So okay. just thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm in the back. Yes. Uh, Phil Wagner, I live on Morinwood. Um, I just had a question, and I'm uh, going off my memory, so please correct me if mm -hmm. I'm wrong. I remember when the study was first commissioned, the council approved about five hundred thousand dollars, up to five hundred thousand to pay for this study. I was wondering if the study is no. complete, how no. much did we end up paying no. for that? Oh, it was 10,000? It was 15. 15,000? Oh, okay, great. <laughs> great. Yeah, it was up to 15, yeah. And Mayor, may I answer? Yes. The, um, and, and just to follow up on that, I, it was one of my, my report items, but um, we are going to be, um, we're a little behind, but on the 23rd, we're going to, with the budget study session, uh, Plant Moran is going to be talking about those water and sewer rates and presenting that study to the community because there's projections and there's other uh, in information in there that I think that would be very, very useful to the public moving forward. Thank you. No wonder we're broke. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's been moved and supported. All in favor? Yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Clearwood. Sir? 
my understanding that's four percent one time for the next 30 years or is it four percent compounded if it's four percent compounded over 30 years that works at a 324 percent increase i pay 210 a month right now that'll work out to 687 after 30 years 30 years brian can you uh, i'm not sure we got 30 years from it's a, a five-year study with one year already done um, but yes it's four percent every year so it would compound um, it's by adopting the rates, the city is not saying it's going to be 4% every year. They're adopting a one-year rate with the idea that the model will be updated by the city every year as part of the budget process, constantly looking out one extra year. So next year, maybe it comes back that it's 2.5% or maybe it's 5% every year for the next four years, uh, depending on the rate increases you get from the county and from Great Lakes Water. and whatever large capital projects have to happen, whether it's water main replacements or sewer lining or, or what have you. So it, it's going to fluctuate year after year, but by using the model and, and spreading it, constantly spreading those increases over four or five years, you'll get to the point where within one or 2% every year, you'll have a very good idea what to expect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Oh, all right then. Uh, motion has been uh, moved and supported uh, for the water and sewer budget rates. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next item is citizens' comments or requests on items not on the agenda. Okay. And just a reminder three minutes. Okay, Mr. Allen. Lloyd Allen, proud resident of Wayne. <clears throat> Good evening, Madam Mayor and most of the council. A um, little disappointing for the second week in a row that we can't get a full crew to be interested enough to uh, attend these council meetings. But I want to clarify something a few, few meetings back. You know, there, I heard a lot up here about an ethics code, mm -hmm. and that was talked about for months. And I spoke against it because I, I really thought it was a couple of politicians trying to dump a little stuff on an honorable man. But I've rethought that. Anytime, you know, it's just troubling, really troubling to me to find out that a member of this council is going around threatening city employees. Bless you. And especially to threaten our city manager. It ain't been, what, half a dozen meetings ago, she reported she got a $340,000 grant that we didn't have before. That's enough to pay her wages for three, four years. That is real troubling to me. And I'm 73 years old, and I've never, myself, nor have I met anyone else who got thrown out of a library for acting like a jerk, okay? So I'm saying this, when you put the ethics together, make sure there's something in there that you cannot uh, threaten city employees. And second of all, if you're going to act like a jerk and get thrown out of another city's library, please don't embarrass me by telling them that you represent me. Thank you. And Thank you. one last thing. In light of all this, I think this man should do the honorable thing and step down. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Yes. Yes. Well, to segue into Brother Allen's comments, Abraham Lincoln once said, character is like a tree and reputation like a shadow. The shadow is what we think of it. The tree is the real thing. Just a couple uh, things I'll hurry up. Uh, through the chair to the city attorney, or maybe Madam Mayor, you can answer it. What is... What does the charter say about compulsory attendance at the meetings, be it excused or unexcused, whatever? Um, another thing, and I don't mean to embarrass my fellow re resident and fellow Wayne Neighborhood Watch Patrol volunteer, Vern Amos. Uh, we all know Vern is a very humble person. I know he's back there shaking his head. Um, a few nights ago, uh, Mr. Amos, uh, while out on patrol, uh, assisted the Wayne police in finding an elderly woman from, I guess, uh, a group home hmm. for the aged. I'm, I'm not sure how to phrase it. 
but he was able to help the police in locating her. Um, I know he's a very humble person, and you know, I mean it from my heart, Vern. You're, you're good. That's just, that's just some of the things. That's just some of the things that the volunteers and Mr. Porter knows because he's on in the group also. Um, we're not there. We get stopped by the residents. Hey, how are you doing? You know, what's what's this about? We're not a vigilante group. We're just helping the police. This is our community. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just the next uh, set of eyes and ears for the, uh, the resident or for the police officers. Um, and I do want to um, ask: Is it Sergeant Ryan or Lieutenant? Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Lieutenant I'm, I'm sorry. Lieutenant Strong. Yeah. Lieutenant Ryan Strong. Strong. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> just call, don't call you late for dinner, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on social media, there's been some things about um, incidences happening at Atwood Park. And I was wondering if, if he no, has any knowledge of that. And if, if he does, what can residents do if they're at Atwood Park walking around or whatever? Because I see a lot of people do this and they're not aware of their surroundings. You need to get off of this and pay, pay attention of your surroundings. And especially a little thing, and, Everybody tells me it's legal unless you get caught. If you don't feel safe, a good thing to do is take your car keys, if you have them, and carry them like this. I don't personally carry a, a, a weapon, but I do Thank own you. a little bit <laughs> slugger. Thank you. And I ran to a gentleman while on a, p a patrol one night. He carries a belt because he said he's going to beat the bad guy down. Okay. All right. So, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. Would the city attorney wish to respond to the absence question? Sure. We, our office has, has drafted a memo in the past regarding this issue at, and a different councilman that it was brought up. So I'd be happy to forward that to the rest of council and present it at the next meeting okay. um, as well. I don't have that memo on hand. Off the top of my head, Section 7.7 .7 of Charter does allow the city council by a vote of not less than three members to compel attendance uh, of another council member at a future meeting. Um, but with regard to the attendance issue, we have already addressed that issue mm -hmm. and drafted a memo. So with no additional time, I'd be happy to email that to council and present it at the next meeting. Okay. Madam Mayor. Mayor. Yes. Mayor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can we move to uh, request his presence if that's the case? Certainly. Uh, make a motion that we do request his presence. Madam Mayor. Meeting. Uh, all due respect, if we yes. can wait till Section 10 items for next agenda. Right. We are yes. currently under citizens' comments. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank yes. You. Thank, Thank you. I, yes. I would like to ask the city attorney to check uh, what is it, whose discretion. Can we, can we wait till we well, get to this our. Is on, this is on the attendance issue, and I thought it would just fall in line with well, it. Well, we were at citizens' comments. Oh, realize, so. but we already had the city Madam attorney. Mayor. Yes. Okay. Go. Point of order on this. Yes. Okay. Uh, the last sentence of this does state that the mayor, city council, and department heads may not respond to questions at the meeting, yes. but will respond by the next council meeting. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. I'm Beverly Pro, a retiree with the city of Wayne. I wish to advise the mayor and city council of my frustration in attempting to replace my health insurance. Um, as a result of my involuntary loss of health insurance coverage, uh, it becomes a qualifying event in which I am able to um, attempt to get health insurance through ORS, the Office of Retirement Services for Public School Retirees. This requires a letter from the terminating group insurance detailing the type of coverage who was covered, why the coverage is ending, and the date the coverage ends. The letter received from the city on April 26 is not, I have been told, is not sufficient. After receiving the letter dated April 26, notifying retirees of the termination of their health insurance on July 1st, I contacted Priority Health on May 2nd, requesting such a letter. After checking with the supervisor, I was advised that they had not heard or that they, they advised me that they had heard that the city of Wayne was considering this. However, they had not received official notification from the city, and until that time, they could not provide me with the cancellation letter. 
I called the city, left a message, and also completed an email request on the city's website with no response. <coughs> I contacted Priority Health today and was advised that they had just received an email from the city this morning indicating their intent to terminate their contract with Priority Health. However, the city did not give them an effective date, and as a result, they still could not provide me with a termination letter. The people, including the supervisors at Priority Health, understand my predicament and have been very helpful investigating the matter, calling me back, and even filing a grievance on my behalf. But until the city provides them with an effective date of termination, they cannot provide me the letter. I am under time constraints to provide the application and require documentations to enroll in this new health insurance in order to have it effective July 1st. And I am obviously very concerned about a lapse in my coverage. The city's termination notification to Priority Health with no effective date almost three weeks after notification to retirees is inconceivable. I am here tonight to, um, I guess, express my frustration. I was approached when I got here um, by personnel and hopefully they informed me that, um, um, uh, who's handling the insurance now? Plant Moran. Plant Moran insurance arm. Um, has, uh, personnel has spoken with them and supposedly they have given uh, Priority Health a date. Um, and uh, the personnel director has offered to draft a letter from the city, um, which I the have been told they mark. will not. Okay. Pardon? This is the three minute mark. Okay. Okay. Do you wish to? Harry, I can, I can handle it. Um, so just just real quick, Ms. Pro, we have order, Madam Mayor. It says that it, in there this that, is a, that this they may. May is volunteer. May. It, it does not say shall. shall no. This is an important may. item. Yes. Thank you. Um, so we talked to Ed Murphy, who who has presented here, and Plant Moran is our representative, um, and they've been here. They were the ones. Ed is actually the one that did the presentation at the last meeting. An email, which was required notification in writing was sent to Rebecca Mladenoff, who is with Priority Health, on Tuesday, April 25th, 2017, at 12.52 p.m., stating, actually, it was a very long email. <laughs> um, to you, Gary and Herman, thanks for, your, thanks for your time in the City of Wayne and mapping out a planned transition to the health reimbursement accounts, uh, HRA, for 7-1-2017. And it, base, it goes through post-65, pre-65, and it says the current plan for post-65 will terminate effective 7-1-2017. And the, um, for pre-65s, it says the, um, there's a different transition, but it also says at termination of 7-1-2017. So we did let them know in writing, and we have contacted Ed because we, we wanted this information because as far as they told us, like within a couple days of it being approved by council, we had asked that they make sure that this happened. Um, we are gonna get to the bottom of this. We're gonna find out who dropped the ball there because it certainly wasn't on our end, but we'll make sure to help out. Now, what's going to happen is Priority Health uh, has an obligation to send these letters because we have terminated the plan. They have a priority. They have to send out letters by the end of the month. Priority Health, it sets the rules on that one, not us. So we will, so please, please look at your email and Carrie, did you want to add something? Say, please come up to the podium, Carrie. In the email, it also does state that um, Ed Murphy requested that he would be hopeful that the letters would be released in early May. Mm -hmm. So we, on our end, we, we. Can I have a copy of that email? I can let you look at it. She can FOIA it. She can FOIA it. I mean, yeah, I, can, I can make a copy of it and just react. Okay. Okay. If that's okay. All right. I'm trying to do, you know, mm -hmm. we're trying right. to do, Bev. We're trying to do the right thing. We really are. We know it's hard. Okay. If, if, Bev, if you want to talk to Carrie, could you please talk outside in the hallway if you want to continue? <coughs> yes, Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Or yes. Madam Mayor. It's my understanding that a uh, council person that misses three unauthorized un, uh, meetings 
can be subject to removal. Unexcused. Unexcused. That's my understanding. I believe it's in the charter. What is the criteria, the criteria such as tonight when you excused him, uh, Councilman Sanders, for not being here? What is the criteria of an excused and unexcused meeting? In other words, can anybody just say I'm not coming and you just say, okay, you're excused? I, I do have the charter. Yes. I, I have the section. So yes. without giving an opinion as to what's right. excused or unexcused, because right. I don't think the charter necessarily lays out excused versus unexcused. But I think you're referencing, if I may, section 5.2, um, which talks about vacancies in office. And it says, states that a vacancy shall occur upon one of the following events. One of the events being, in the case of members of council, if such officer shall miss four consecutive regular meetings of the council, unless such absences shall be excused by the council, and the reason therefore entered in the proceedings of the council at the time of each absence, or upon missing 25% of such meetings, whether or not excused. So it talks about four consecutive regular meetings unless they're excused. So an excused meeting, if it breaks up the four consecutive, it, it would not count towards the four consecutive, or in total, 25% of the meetings held for the year, regardless of whether they're <coughs> excused or unexcused. Charter itself does not address what constitutes uh, an acceptable or an excused absence versus an unexcused absence. So, uh, question on that though. Please, said, Mr. Allen, please. I guess I have a question. I know, but you've already had your opportunity to speak. Let Mr. Roberts. Thank continue. you, ma'am. Um, Mayor, I've already lost a couple minutes. I would like, to, I'd like my time on the clock because I'm already under a minute. Well, we, uh, we're accepting comments. How do I start and stop? I don't understand. I would, I would respectfully Mayor. ask for an opportunity to speak tonight over the yes. three minutes then. Thank well. you, ma'am. Um, so this, this text message issue came to my lap via Mr. Sanders. And um, it appears to me at this point that council's hands may be tied. Our hands as residents are not tied. And I've said over and over and over again, I want nothing to do with the recall. But I also feel partly responsible for this man being on council. And I respectfully ask this body to bring in front of the citizens of Wayne in open council this matter so that it is fleshed out here. I understand you've been told that there's legal reasons why you can't. I would like to make a statement that is, this is how corruption happens. This is corruption at its finest. We're looking at it today. Corruption is why the city of Wayne is in the mess it's in today, because we have allowed our elected officials to do and say and get away with pretty much whatever they want. This has to stop. It has to end now. And I respectfully ask this council to do this in open council so that we as citizens can see for ourselves what we're dealing with. Because if Councilman Sanders refuses to come forward and provide what he said was there, then we as citizens need that information so that when I start a recall campaign, I have two legs to stand on. I want to be able to go to the citizens of Wayne if I'm forced to and be able to say I have a good, strong reason. And if council does not do this in the open, you're going to deny me that ability. So I again, respectfully ask, if I've heard tonight that he can be compelled to, to appear, we need to do that. Because I've said from the beginning, one of two people need to go. If it was Miss Narserini, she has to go. I'm sorry. We can't have that. And I can't have a council member that is sitting up there manipulating other council members, manipulating citizens, lying to citizens, and costing people money and time. He brought me into this. I didn't ask for this. And I'm not going to let it go. And I demand my council step up and put it into this. Thank you for the extra time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Can I just ask yes. a question, please? Yes, you may ask your question. Did someone the attorney said? Uh, if please step to the right, podium. If, if I'm hearing right, it said the council had to excuse the councilman, not the mayor. 
Is that what I, did I hear that correctly? That's my only question. Yes. 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 My name is Vern Amos. I live on Stellwagen here in Wayne. I'm a resident of over 45 years. I'm here to ask the citizens once again to please turn on your porch lights to assist us in the neighborhood watch patrol, to watch your neighborhoods. Um, we're all part of this community and we can all help by turning those porch lights on. And if you see something, call the police department, call the fire department. It's not a big deal. If you see something, say something. Because that's the only way we're going to run these thugs out of town. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the comment from Mr. Blackwell. Um, I was honored to help that night and a following night uh, with this lady. Um, she was quite cold, quite disturbed, didn't know where she was at. So it was a pleasure to assist them. Thank you. But once again, if, if you could please turn on your porch lights and help us out, or if, if you can't come out and help join the patrol, we could also take cash donations at Icon Computer, and that would be greatly appreciated. We have received some donations. We've been giving away free light bulbs to assist you uh, with lowering your electric cost of having that porch light on. And... Um, we're going to continue that program as long as we can afford it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amos. Yes. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Just a couple of quick things. Uh, in reviewing our website, which is pretty nice. Could we have your name and address? I'm sorry. Pardon? Your name and address. Chris Johnson. Okay. Retired Lieutenant. City of Wayne. I no longer live in the town. Your website is, uh, is nice. In looking on the converted YouTube videos of council proceedings and special study sessions, mm -hmm. it came to my attention that a study session on April 18th was not posted. Seven to eight o'clock, presentation by Plant Moran and some other folks, including a, a commentary that I made within time limits. Uh, I would appreciate it if the city would take that move and post that. It's of great interest to the retirees of the city of Wayne and to a bunch of our family that still live in this town. Uh, I'm not going to reread it and I'm not going to waste your time. You've all heard it. The second thing uh, came to my attention reviewing our, uh, our community paper, the Wayne Dispatch. Mm -hmm. I want to commend Mr. Reese for running a business and for his community service. I'm also going to ask you, if you didn't check it or retract it, that you read the comment on retiree health care approved. It says the health plan was approved 4-2 to two by City Council on April 18th to provide the City of Wayne retirees with health care while reducing city spending. Pre-65 retirees would pay $241.50 per month if single, $508 if a couple, and $695 for a family. Post-65 retirees would pay $128.50 or $257. This is expected to reduce deficit spending by $465,000, 745, $465,723,000. This plan will start July 1 with the new City of Wayne fiscal calendar. The figures are backwards. It's completely misleading. Most of us probably would have bought those numbers. But it makes you guys look like you did us a favor and the bottom line was those are the numbers you're going to give us, not what we're going to pay you. And insurance is considerably higher than that, as you all know. So I'm going to ask you to consider doing something about that, if you hadn't already, maybe in spades and be a little more transparent. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Hi, I'm Hi. Tina. I'm on Winifred. I just had a quick question. I noticed that the library's parking um, in the garage was closed down and you have to only access it through Michigan Avenue. But when I was there, I noticed it's filled to the brim with cars. What's going on with that? 
City Manager. Mark Chevrolet rents space in there. Oh, okay. So we get revenue from that then? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Yes. First and foremost, I want to say that the last two meetings, the new format is a, is a nice change of pace. Uh, congratulations on that. And uh, I, I think, you know, not trying to be a, a smart aleck here, but why compel this guy to come? I mean, council meetings have gone uninterrupted. We've gotten work done. Let this guy stay at home. Let, let the problem solve itself. And uh, so these meetings now, we're starting to see these blueprints on the wall pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. And uh, we keep saying that we need to find new revenue sources. Guys, this is it, okay? This is how we're going to move this city forward. The days of old where we were hoping a Neiman Marcus or some other boutique brand would come here are over, okay? We got to do with what we can get. And uh, to beat up a, a car lot, if that's all we can get, it's, it's free market enterprise. It's how it works. And uh, this is a good sign. It's week after week. We're seeing growth in the city, new revenue streams, but there's still some old thinking you know, from some new council people. And uh, we're talking about not spending seven grand or 10 grand, 11 grand. You guys made a motion it cost the city over a half a million dollars over the last six months, okay? Where was the concern then, okay? You guys know who you were. I asked you the question at the last meeting. Nobody stuck their hand up and owned it, but we know who you guys were. We know who the puppet master behind the scenes is. He's obviously not here. So let's move on from this and let's keep our nose to the grindstone and keep things going. And, and uh, thanks, Matt Miller. I know we don't always agree on stuff, but there's a lot of work going on in the city that, that we can all be proud of. And, and as a resident, I, I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we'll close the citizens' comments. The next item is item 10, items for the next agenda. Are there any new items that you wish to put on the next agenda? I do, Mayor Rowan. Yes. Um, I'd like to ask that we um, have a discussion and possibly putting together a um, brainstorming res resident-based uh, committee to look at two different areas uh, in our neighborhoods in each of our districts as well as um, Michigan Avenue at looking at ways that we can come up with in to visually um, improve uh, the appearance of them and uh, connecting uh, different organizations, you know, maybe from the court system, or the JCs or the churches and identifying uh, some uh, of the elderly and special needs uh, residents that just need some of that little bit of, uh, of fixing up in their homes. I th and as well as uh, Michigan Avenue, looking at that separately uh, in ways that we can visually improve the appearance uh, of it in general. Uh, I'm just asking the council if that we, if we could have a discussion on trying to formulate that. We've had a lot of good traction in our downtown. I think you know we could start having a discussion about looking at a five, three to five year, five to seven year uh, game plan and how we can um, beautification enhancement uh, along Michigan Avenue as well as in each district in our city. Okay. Okay. I'll respond to that. My comments. Oh, okay. well, I'm okay. sorry. And one other question I have, or a thing I'd like to ask is, if we could look at um, some grant opportunities for horticultural um, uh, 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 grants for some of the um, properties that we have. Um, on the west south side of the city uh, opportunities that we could maybe be able to develop some tax base there through okay. okay anything else for the next agenda I got something yes can we look at the and I'm just that we can have a discussion about it or in the future there's a the two percent um, cost of living increase on the pensions that's in the charter and explain that so we can have a conversation what that means to the council because I was oh, talking 
Uh, the yeah, cola? Okay. All that stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. can do that next meeting. All right. Anything yeah. else? All right. Um, okay. okay. Uh, next the next item. item is item 11, consent calendar. There are five items before you. What's the wish of council? Move to approve. It's been moved by. Uh, Move to approve. Um, it's been moved by Count Mayor Pro Tem Miller and supported by uh, Councilman Sutton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, next is city manager's report. I'm sorry, sure. I took your spot. <laughs> Do you wish to say it? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, good evening. So I just have a few things. Um, so on May 3rd, we're going to have a couple of presentations at the budget study session. And the reason, other than just the budget, the reason that I'm adding these is because they do have um, a strong affiliation with the budget moving forward and some of the um, collections and other things that we've discussed. So three items with uh, Katie's help. Um, she's going to be talking about uh, creating a vendors list, a qualified registered vendors list. She's going to talk about a plan that she's put together that she wants to propose to you for a future meeting. And that would include potentially having uh, vendors register and just starting from scratch. And uh, so I'll have Katie discussing that at the next meeting. I'm excited to hear it. She's had a lot of, she's put a lot of present, or um, a lot of work into this. And frankly, I got to tell you, she's hit the ground running fast. So she's doing a great job. I think we definitely got the right person and she came back. That's, yeah. even, that's even helpful. <laughs> As I stated, uh, Plant Rant's going to be doing their water and sewer presentation. Katie will be joining Brian with that. And then you've probably heard or maybe not have heard about the RAP program, W-R-A-P. The RAP program is a program that's offered to people that are having hardship, and you have to meet a certain qualification. But um, I want Katie's going to present on the RAP program and talk a little bit about some people who are having a lot of financial difficulties who are in arrears with their water. It's to help them get back on track, create a new account, and and um, help them to make their payments and uh, do whatever we can do as a city to and and you know um, to try to keep their water on. And this is going to be offered, I believe, K through Wayne Metro. And wing yes so Katie will have more information on that I think it's a great program especially with the fact that bills are going up um, you know times I believe have not gotten any easier I mean since the recession I think they've improved some but all communities are still facing this residents are we don't like to see residents with their water shut off we don't that's not what our goal is I mean we have a job to do but that's the last thing on um, that we'd like to uh, have happen so Katie will be talking about that I was a part of a meeting this morning, um, thanks to uh, Lori for putting this together. Uh, Matt was at a training, so unfortunately Matt couldn't make it, but um, we certainly missed you, Matt. Um, we met with Colliers. Colliers, as you recall, was the group that the, the council approved uh, the last meeting to uh, start um, selling our properties, all of our commercial properties, our city properties, and uh, without, not resident, but the commercial side of things. And we met for several hours this morning, went through every um, property that's available, discussed uh, every uh, um, issue, uh, every wetland, everything that you could possibly imagine, or any um, back issues that have happened over the years. And uh, he was, uh, Peter McGrath was very well prepared when he left. And he said that actually this is really good that Wayne did this because a lot of communities do not sit down with them or take the time to explain the properties or have an understanding of what the residents want, what the citizens want, what the businesses next door to these buildings want to see. So it was a very productive meeting. Um, Lori also took uh, Peter on a tour of the city to look at all of the properties, and I believe, Lori, he was very encouraged by uh, his challenge. So um, I thank you for, for putting that together. And again, uh, Councilman, thank you. That was very, a job well done getting that uh, on track. Uh, mm -hmm. Mayor Pro Tem, I'm glad you talked a little bit about getting the residents involved. As you know, I've been a big proponent of those um, in the past doing the visioning sessions with the community. And I actually talked to Mayor Rowe about this, and maybe... Uh, making it a little bit, uh, instead of kind of uh, a larger perspective, breaking it out a little bit more and putting some thought into it, getting a group uh, of people in to talk about the finances, seeing how they understand offering, getting some of these businesses involved who have finance background, getting a breakout group to talk about the downtown, you know, getting um, uh, you know Wayne Main Street involved and talking about some of their visions, what they're trying to accomplish, talking, uh, and then another group talking about the residential areas and the parks. I think it's very important that we really focus on the items that are really giving us grave challenges right now. And then uh, the another one, you know, and we can certainly talk about this, I want to get Council's feedback, is getting back to the vacancy discussion. I mean, with the, obviously with, with Colliers, we're trying to alleviate that, but 
is, as he even said this morning, Wayne is not the only community that's going through this. Um, you know, people are shopping online too much. Mm -hmm. People are spending way too much money online. People are shutting down small businesses. So basically, I mean, we have to be real careful in how we choose businesses coming here because a big B couldn't make it here. You know, we, we, we don't, we're not saying that it can't, but I mean, I think that the demographic is showing that, you know, people would rather have the 99 cent coffee from McDonald's than the $7 Big B coffee. Um, you know, McDonald's is packed every day. Wendy's is packed every day. Arby's is packed every day. Um, some of our restaurants are not packed every day. Um, so we just have to be smart in some of the, the ways that we approach business. And basically, how do we draw people, companies into the downtown, and, and frankly, that don't always have to depend on just Wayne residents to keep them going. So we're doing a lot of thinking and a lot of thought process, but I think in that, what you're saying is we need the feedback from the residents. I mean, we, we're seeing what we can on Facebook. We're following what we can. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of thought. Um, and I also think that after, when we get the ready redevelopment going, too, we're going to have to have master plan meetings, which is going to require a lot of public input. And that's going to entail the whole city. So I think a couple of those steps are really good, getting the community back involved and engaged. So I'm glad you brought that up. It reminded me to talk a little bit about it. Um, okay. I, I just, I just, Mayor, I, I don't want to step out of bounds here, but I just want to say something because I, 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 I have provided the mayor with everything I possibly can. I, I just with regards to this issue with me because I come up a lot with regards to these text messages and everything's going on. All I want to say is this: when this issue came to light, I gave the mayor everything I could. Everybody has a an account where you can only get a certain amount of text messages for a certain amount of months without having to get a subpoena or a lawyer or something like that. I've already spent money. I've already, I'm already working on getting my text messages. I'm bringing them to the table. I'm showing up for work every day. I'm here. I've got nothing to hide. So I just want to put it to rest and I just want to say I'm from my end. I'll handle it the way that I have to. Council will handle it the way that they have to. But again, my credibility is in question, something I hold very high and near and dear to my heart. I love this community. It hurts that somebody would go this far hurts terribly. You can't understand it until you're in somebody's shoes who's going through this, that somebody could be so malicious. I adore the city. I work hard. I put in 60, 60, 70 hours a week here. No kidding. I'm not going to give up. I hope you don't give up on me. And I just want to say I've produced. If somebody else can't produce, I don't know what to tell you. Thank you. Next item. Our comments from members of the City Council. Uh, let's see, Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Thank you. Uh, just short and quick, I just want a um, <coughs> big uh, shout out to our community development, Matt, Lisa, for everybody involved, the business owners stepping up, and just all these drawings and plans that have been presented to us over the last three meetings. You know, it's a vision that's coming a reality. Yes. You know, the perception of Wayne is changing right before our eyes. We're witnessing change. And, you know, it, uh, I'm just, it's, it's such a great feeling, you know, to actually finally see this. I've been living here for 34 years, and I never thought, I thought it would happen by then. Mm -hmm. But to be here and be part of it, it's a quite an honor. Um, I went to the Historical Museum uh, last uh, week, and I'll tell you what, two years ago, there were a few people mingling at these meetings. That meeting, there was a full house. I mean, people are taking much more pride in this community. People are, 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 are taking ownership of this community that they haven't before. And you know, I, I'm, I'm just all proud of everybody here. Uh, you know, it was nice listening to residents that are eyewitnesses to history that show up at these meetings and share their stories about Wayne and the things that you can learn from those things about our history. You know, history does repeat itself. There's things we can learn from our own history. And, you know, the things that we can learn from history is that, you know, um, sometimes we have to um, look back at our, in ourselves, in our souls, and think about what we want to do and not who we were. And I think we're starting to start going in that direction, and I, and I appreciate it. 
you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same things over again and expecting the same results. And I know that's an old cliche, but it's so very true. And I'm seeing that people are starting to uh, change how I th see things are changing for the better. And we just have to work together and continue to uh, uh, be positive about it. Thank you. Councilman Sutton? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Porter? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't even know where to start. You, you told us last week there was an investigation going on. Could we have something on the investigation? I sent you emails. Is that okay to put out to the public? Yes. I have no problem, uh, Mayor, updating updating the okay. council, although they, I think they've been updated via email, Yes. but also updating the public. There was a comment at a prior meeting that there was an investigation uh, being made with regard to some allegations. Um, at this time, uh, a report was taken uh, by the Wayne, Wayne Police Department with regard to some allegations that I think were discussed at the prior meeting. The Michigan State Police, it was turned over to the Michigan State Police. They did investigate the matter, uh, and they came to the conclusion that they did not observe evidence of any criminal activity that could then be forwarded to the prosecutor's office. So at this time, any remaining allegations would be a civil matter. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I want you to realize that there is a difference between criminal and immoral and unethical conduct. And I think that's what we're talking here. I can understand that the Michigan State Police didn't bother. Yeah, they, they're shorthanded too. They don't have time to, to investigate our little problems. But this isn't a little problem sitting up here. You know, one of the things I do want to ask, and Lloyd Allen brought it up, but I had it written down, that I would like to know who gives the excused absence. So far it's been by the sole discretion of the mayor. I don't think that's in the charter. I think it's council. I think we need to vote on whether it's a, an excused absence or not. Um, to tell you the truth, I'm very discouraged. I'm very disturbed. And I'm just plain embarrassed that this has gone on this long and we have no resolution of this matter. I'm giving it, you know, really serious a thought if I even want to sit up here anymore. I am embarrassed by what goes on. Thank you. Councilman Gabriel. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to bring a little bit more light to one of the items that is, was on the agenda today. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of just ran through it, and it's a huge step in our community. And it's the uh, Wayne Main Street, and I see Maxwell out there. I just want to say thank you as well to uh, the Wayne Main Street on putting that together. Um, unfortunately, as much as I love food trucks and a fun day, I have to send my regrets due to work obligations. But um, I, I would encourage everybody to go. Um, I know downtown we have a uh, food truck alley as well, and it's always a joy to go. Um, so I would recommend everybody go visit and kind of see what it's all about. And uh, post pictures as well. I'd be curious to see what trucks are down there as I'm a frequent visitor to many. Um, but other than that, that's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Racy. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to just uh, let everybody know that it was mentioned uh, in the last meeting on July 14th. Mark your calendars at 8 o'clock. We have downtown days going from um, Thursday through Saturday, but on Friday night, the Wayne Rotary is going to be uh, having a concert in Gowdy Park with uh, Steve King and the Diddleys. It's a free concert to the to the public, and uh, and, and uh, let your friends and neighbors know. And let's get a lot of people down there and uh, enjoy our community. Um, there's some issues going on with the parking structure, and I know that we closed it. Um, but I was going to mention something. I've, I've mentioned it before. There's a moisture issue in there where it's dripping from the top down layers, and then the moisture drips, and it's dripping down further. And you see, see a rust area that needs to be addressed. Um, there's like a, 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 a like a rubber a thing at the top that's been <coughs> removed by somebody, and I th and I think that that's causing this moisture problem, and allowing that those drips to happen. So. If we could look at that, I would appreciate it. Also, 
the library hours. Um, I had somebody mention to me that the hours at the library, we, we, we might, might want to look at that. I mentioned it to, um, to Councilman Porter and to Alfred Brock, who's on the committee, that, that uh, I was made aware of that Monday is like, like the most frequent day that people want to use the library. And so um, I think that it would be good for them to look at those things and try to figure out are the hours that we're providing the peak hours that people really need it and make our assessment of we only have a small amount of time. Let's make those the peak hours that people need the library the most and uh, really uh, try to maximize what we have because we have a jewel there. And, the, and I know that the numbers and circulation is going down. I was in there today and at one o'clock there's like 10 people in the library. That's not enough people. But when you think about it, all of our kids are in school, you know, and there's things that are, people are at work. Maybe we open a little bit later so we can stay open later. We're closing at five o'clock and not really giving people an opportunity who work a chance to really come to the library. And I think that if we just start taking some uh, evaluation of that kind of stuff, there may be some hope there that we can get get our numbers back up uh, with that. And, and and from what I understand, they have a moisture problem there too. There's water coming in off the ceiling um, that that needs to be addressed with a leak. So um, then the the last thing I wanted to mention that that really wasn't mentioned that this budget is not a a great thing that happened tonight it, it's a deficit budget and the residents and the council need to understand there's no fund balance next year we have to really figure out things um, if things would have happened that were passed back in December we had that half million dollars and we would have been in the black this time but we're not and there's a lot of things that still need to be addressed and we need to figure out how to um, fix that problem because the money's not there and next year we're we're in even bigger trouble we're going to we're going to trigger stuff with the state this time and and i voted for this because it's the truth i'm tired of budgets that are not telling you the truth i mean i've sat in councils and voted no in the past and that's because the truth wasn't being told we were we were putting um millages in there and pie in the sky things in there that didn't make any sense and telling the public we had a, a balanced budget when it wasn't the facts i wouldn't approved anything but a deficit budget because that's the truth and that's what the residents need to hear and the transparency of what people need to know there is no money and we are in big trouble and we need people's help in fixing the problems thank you thank you um, I would just like to say a uh, huge thank you to Main Street for the uh, Mother's Day chocolate walk. I don't know how many of you were able to participate in it, but it was a great opportunity to get uh, 13 pieces of chocolate from Cordon's. Uh, they were all very tasty, I must say, and yet walk around and visit businesses in the city that you probably wouldn't normally go into. Um, the vape uh, lounge on Wayne Road they were giving the chocolates a away as well and so I went in there it was very interesting the the owner of the facility uh, really is very well versed in uh, the vaping I, I guess you call it uh, <laughs> but uh, you know I was I was very impressed with it and uh, the night before uh, Friday night before the walk I had been my husband and I were out and we were driving on Wayne Road and there were like 10 people standing outside of the vape lounge and they were vaping out. And I wanted to know, on Saturday I asked him why they were doing that and he said it was a fundraiser for a friend of theirs who uh, was opening up actually a place and a restaurant in Detroit and had had some health issues. So um, it, was, it was an interesting experience. So if you have an opportunity, you know, stop in there and, and talk to them. Uh, it's who knows it might be a way to go and just sit down and vape together and have a conversation with people and it you know he talks about some of the health benefits to it and such and there there is they can add uh, nicotine to it if you want but otherwise they don't have to and you know things are changing and people do different different things for entertainment but uh, he seems to it's a very nice place he has nice comfortable chairs and couches and uh, all kinds of vaping tools and flavors and such and uh, it's a really interesting experience to go there and uh, learn about it um, and the other thing is uh, 
you know, I have no problem with uh, council saying they don't want to excuse somebody. I have no problem with that at all. Uh, everybody has an opportunity to write and ask in writing a state they wish to be excused and give the reason. And um, anybody can make the motion not to accept it. I've never just, nobody's ever said anything. So, um, you know, uh, that's all. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Support. It's been